All right, everyone. Welcome back to episode three of the official podcast of Roush Performance. It's called You Don't Know Jack, but don't worry. We're going to tell you all about Jack. Jack Roush Jr. and I are hanging out with the one and only Bill Co. But you guys are going to find out all about him. Air Force captain, um, upcoming, I'm going to say automotive YouTuber. And these guys are going to take the YouTube automotive game by storm can't wait to see what happens with that he's going to tell you a little bit more about that uh but i mean this guy is one of the best automotive content creators there is and i enjoy following him i followed him way before uh this podcast was even thought about and uh will man you are the man on uh on the ig but uh what what's been going on in your world thank you so much i appreciate that this is this is really cool to be on this podcast i, I love the roush brand and i love driving mine so this is really special um, what's going on in the automotive world? Uh, well, we're about to start, as far as I know, the world's first automotive content creation house. And I'm literally packing up everything in my room right now uh, to move into it this weekend. It's going to be uh, just north of Huntington Beach. It's going to be me, Nate Ryder, and Drew Peacock. And we're just going to take it by storm, all three of us with our uh, Mustangs. Awesome. That is awesome. And it, yeah, no, that's cool. Are you going to take the wall wrap with you behind you? I, I'm really sad about this. I painted this myself. and uh, Oh, it's I'm gonna, painted. Yeah, and I painted it like a month before our landlord told us that the house was being sold. So I'm going to have to paint over it tomorrow, white, and then uh, go to the new house and, and do this all over again. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, definitely if people know you, they know exactly uh, that, that paint there. Yeah. But, uh, man, it's, it's pretty cool seeing – your uh just appearance you're always around these probably the baddest cars in la and you are rolling around in a roush rs that is blowing away blowing the doors off a lot of these vehicles which is unreal yeah it's it's funny i actually i catch a, a lot of flack for two reasons in this car other than the fact or first of all let me just say like i love it it is, I'm so proud of this build, beyond proud to have the Roush badges on it. But there are two things that get me in a lot of trouble. Number one, it is a V6. And almost no one knows that Roush actually did some factory V6s of the S197 model, which is what I have. Hmm. And there's so few of them, which it leads to number two. Um, uh, they think it's fake. They think that I put fake badging on and I've literally oh, pulled into meets and people will say like, I can hear them from the car. They'll be like, Oh, fake badges. And I'm like, no, it's not, you know? And it's just like, now that I've, uh, I've actually boosted it. It's pro charged. It's full bolt on E85. I've tuned it. You know, the thing's a monster. Now nobody knows what it is because there's like, right. you know, you got Roush badges going on. It's wrapped. It doesn't sound normal at all. You know, the Roush exhaust makes it sound real clean. So people have to ask now. They're like, is it a V8? Is it a V6? What's that whistling under your hood? Like nobody knows what's going on. So I like to, to rock that very unique vehicle that, uh, that just no one can guess. Right. Well, it's funny. I actually think the V6, you know, RS is kind of underappreciated. I've taken it on the track before and because it's so light in the engine bay, it makes it really nimble and yeah. it still has oh, yeah. a pretty meaty sound to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're going to love this. I actually went on the track at speed Vegas where you guys are going soon. Uh, it was just me and uh, my buddy who's going to move into this content house with me, Nate Ryder. He has a 1200 horsepower GT 500 and I had my uh, Roush RS. This was just like two months ago. And guess which car overheated, had brake failure, and was done for the day while the oh, other man. one was still running hard laps, keeping up with a Z06. That V6 was still in the game. So, you know, Shelby awesome. Roush, you know, yeah. Roush stayed in the game. Oh, man. No surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think we can get the official validation that that is a real Roush Mustang. We do have Jack Roush Jr. here with us, and That's I'm pretty right. sure he can sign off on that approval. <laughs> so if any doubters out there, uh, we, we got this uh, validated right here. Amazing. Um, okay. I mean, so, Will, obviously, I feel like everyone that gets in the automotive game, I do feel like it, well, the cool part about it is you don't have to be real young to get into it. You can start at any time. Uh, but the story of getting into it is always really cool. So what was your automotive journey in getting into this? I love this. It was like uh, 11 or 12 years old, whenever Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 came out. It was the first oh, yeah. video game I had. Um, my aunt bought it so I'd have something to do when I came over to her house because I wasn't even allowed to have video games. And I remember seeing that yellow Lamborghini, Marcia Lago, on the cover and playing with the different cars in the game. And I was just hooked. And then shortly after that, you know, while I was in high school, Midnight Club LA came out. 
And I learned the streets of LA through the game because the game is uh-huh. identical to the actual city of LA. And I drove a Mustang. I had it black with blue stripes as I mapped it in the game. And as fate would have it, I ended up moving to LA one day, just as my you know 11 year old self wanted to, and drove a black Mustang with blue stripes on it uh, through LA until um, I ran over a pothole and it totaled that car, which kind of led me to pick up the Roush that I have now. Wow, it's oh, okay, the yeah. car. How totally. did that happen? I, I was, this is, the story gets really wild. I was driving the Stradman, who is currently one of the biggest automotive YouTubers in the world, wasn't at the time, uh, to a space base to let him watch a rocket launch because I'm still, you know, tied in with the Air Force and it was going to be a blog of his. And on the way back, we hit a pothole, made a weird noise in the car. I dropped him off um, on my home going around 25 miles an hour. The whole wheel came off the car. And it oh. drove the undercarriage. It did like twelve thousand dollars worth of damage. The car was only worth eight grand because it was a V six Mustang. It was just a stock S one ninety seven. Um, and I was in real trouble because I'd only been in LA for like a month. I just separated from active duty. I think I had a thousand dollars in my bank account. Rent was fifteen hundred. I had oh, no man. job. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I remember like just kind of laughing. And my friend who was riding with me at the time was next to me, and I was like, dude, like we survived. Like it didn't happen on the freeway. It happened at 20 miles an hour. Like yeah. we're still in the game. We're still in the game. And you know, I think anybody that wants to chase a YouTube dream or come out to LA or do anything like that, like it really doesn't matter what happens. As long as you're still here, if you're still playing the game, you're winning the game. And okay. um, I had to come up with something fast and there were a lot of unknowns. And you know, when you don't even know if you're going to make rent at the end of the month, how can you possibly shop for cars? So I flew home uh, to North Carolina uh, for Christmas, and I had one week before I had to fly back to L.A., and I had to figure my whole life out, where I was going to work, what car I was going to drive, all these things. And I'd always associated uh, myself with Mustang, the Mustang brand, and that was like a personality trait to me. So to me, it it had to be a Mustang, but I couldn't afford – I couldn't even afford rent. How could I buy a Mustang? I I can relate to that, by the way. Yeah? The connection to Mustang. To Mustang, yeah, where it was like, if I drove anything else, it'd almost be like a lie. It was like, you know, who am I? So I uh, I remember I was shopping around online. I was looking all week. And halfway through the week, just as a stroke of luck, the insurance company called back and said, we're giving you 14 grand for your car, which on Kelly Blue Book, it was only worth at best 10. I don't know how they got 14, but they did. Uh, so I was like, okay, 14 grand. That's amazing. It's way more than I thought. I can at least get another V6, which I would have loved something different. I didn't want to get the same car, but I was like, okay, whatever. I'll get a V6. And I was going to search around V6s. I see this one in Irvine uh, for $15,000. And it was a Roush RS 2014. I had a 2013 before. And uh, they had it priced for $15,000. <laughs> wow. I was like, okay, let me do some math here. I'm getting 14 grand from the insurance company. I have $1,000 in my bank account. I think I could get this car, but I still didn't have a job. So I was like, you know, the part of me, you know, the focus was on what am I going to drive, you know, more so than like, how am I going to pay for all this? Um, and just uh, things lined up in a nice way. And I ended up uh, getting a job offer that same week working for a car company, an exotic car. So that kind of took care of the YouTube channel, uh, which I decided to launch right when I came back. And, uh, and I picked up, the, I took an Uber. Uh, with some of the last dollars in my bank account, one way from LAX to Irvine, it was expensive and uh, walked in. I didn't even haggle with the sales guy. I was like, give me the car. I don't even need to test drive it. Like, I know I want this. I looked around, did my own inspection, uh, took it to a quick shop, made sure like the wheels weren't going to fall off of this one. And once they gave it it, their blessing, I I wrote a check to buy the car in full and I drove it home. And I remember the sense, the, the relief to be back in a Mustang know that I had a job, which I took in advance on the paycheck, by the way, to pay rent that, that month. And, uh, and just the feeling of sitting awesome. in those Recaro seats and driving home something a little more special than the car that I had previously and was thinking, how did I total a car and come out ahead? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dang. So, I mean, I guess, so you, obviously you said that you, you, you did have a job or you didn't have a job? Um, I had a job point. offer. Uh, which yeah. of course, you know, like things might not work out. Like that job could disappear right. in three weeks if they don't like you. But, you know, I had just enough certainty for me to just pull the trigger on this, take a huge risk and say, I'm, I'm driving a Roush from now on. I'm going to do YouTube. I'm going to say episode one was me talking about the mods on the Roush and why the Roush RS is different from a regular V6. That's the first YouTube blog I ever uploaded. No way. Walk around that, that car. Awesome. Yeah. Dang. 
So okay, so your your YouTube dream started started really early, or pretty much as soon as you got that car, or just before that. It was pretty much yeah, right before because the day that I drove the Stradman to that Air Force base, we were in the car for hours, and he was telling me all about YouTube, and he was like, "You should start YouTube." And then once I crashed my car, he's like, "Okay, you really should start YouTube." You know, this is a right. story. So. <laughs> So I, uh, that's what I did. I just started vlogging and I turned my phone sideways. I didn't even have a camera. And that's when I filmed it. It was at, uh, it was at the job I was working at. My car was just parked outside and I just walked around it. There was a whole garage full of Ferraris and Lamborghinis. And I could have filmed any of that for vlog number one, but I went outside and filmed my, my new route. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, no, I mean, being, being around, I guess the automotive world in LA, I'm sure there's some crazy stories. I just saw, I I'm pretty sure it was a party that, that you threw or some type of get together. I don't know how, what we can call it, Yeah. Uh, but you've been around some crazy stuff. What's probably the craziest automotive story? I mean, and then also on top of that, Mm -hmm. what is, um, as far as any of the vehicles you've raced, what is the car that you beat that you're just like, absolutely like, I beat this type of car. A Shelby. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) A Shelby GT350 in a dig race. And we pretty much tied on a road race, but uh, I gave him a run for his money. Um, Wow. The uh, craziest automotive story, it's really hard to narrow that down because I quite literally feel like I'm living a movie out here. And uh, anyone in the LA car scene will tell you that, that like every weekend, you really don't know what to expect because um, you just run into so many fantastic people all the cars that are being built and made that are just wildly unique and incredible socal is the epicenter of what's happening in cars and um you know i see stuff here every day that i'm like i don't even know what that is you know so um as far as crazy stories um uh there's so many um i want to i want to think of one that has to do with this car with the Roush. Um, I mean, I guess, uh, well, th- here, th- think on that. Hey, hey, How did I the share, come about? Can I oh, share yeah, one yeah, thing? Go ahead, Jack. You know, yeah. hearing your story, honestly, I compl- I'm not joking. I completely relate to you. You know, I, yeah. uh, my professional racing career has been in racing Mustangs in, uh, IMSA and world challenge, you know, racing against Porsches and McLarens and, you know, uh, Mercedes, all that stuff, you know, basically the best sports cars in the world. And what I love, you know, other than the fact, you know, I, I feel like I practically was born in a Mustang, you know, what I love about the Mustang is it, you know, it really drives people who truly love cars and, you know, it's not about being better than anyone else unless, you know, that means beating them. And, uh, you know, to take that, to take a Mustang out and to take that up against, you know, all these wild cars, you know, I, it's funny hearing you say that, you know, I can totally relate. I love that. Yeah. The Mustang is just something about it. It's just this all American, it's the dream and it's the car that really anyone can attain. It's not built. I mean, that's what Ford wanted. They wanted a car that was fast and sleek and fun, but that was attainable by almost anyone, by the working class. And, you know, that's, that's what my brand is all about is that, you know, like I mentioned before, like, you know, I've been on minimum wage until almost, it was like February this year. It was very recent. Like I got, uh, you know, a different job, but, um, I bought this car and I built it to be faster than as many cars as I can faster than a lot of V8s on minimum wage. And I right. did it without any, you know, trust fund, any parent money, nobody else funding me, no handouts. Like, you know, I got little sponsorships from companies here and there, but I had to work for those and I had to do a lot of content trades and things like that. But it was like, nothing was handed on a silver platter. And that was because at the end of the day, anybody that wants to do what I'm doing, which is, you know, chase a dream, whether it's automotive or not, come to a place like LA by yourself without knowing anyone. Um, and then also start from literally ground zero, like I was, where I zeroed out my bank account to get this car and had nothing going for me and get to where I'm at, where I'm at, at now, which is just only the beginning. You know, this is the first chapter yeah. of this automotive house that you can do it. I didn't take any shortcuts. I didn't have any free handouts. And I love that Roush was able to, you know, build something that was unique enough to get me into places that I had no business in. You know, like, like a month ago, I just attended a supercar rally and there were only McLarens and Lamborghinis and there were like 40 some odd cars on this rally. It was a week long and it was incredibly expensive. And I got to be a part of it as a guest invite because 
I just had all these automotive connections. I brought people onto the rally. I brought sponsors on. And then I came and attended the rally. And when we did meet and greets, there were people there looking for my car. And I was driving a V6 Mustang. Like my car did not belong. And, and I was out on the track with these cars, like running hard with them, you know, and in a Mustang. So it was yeah. just, it's constantly outside of my element um, in a car that doesn't belong places. And I think that's like very true to who I am too. It's just that like very unique thing that just nobody really sees coming. And then, you know, there we are. And, awesome. and you didn't do anything about hi hiding this car either. Obviously you were influenced at a younger age on the video game with uh, the black, with, with the blue rally stripes. Mm -hmm. How did you come about doing this rap? Yeah. So actually my last car, the Mustang that got totaled looked exactly, exactly like the one in Midnight Club LA. Oh, nice. Um, and it had a, uh, the license plate Harambe, which was a very popular choice. Um, oh, and yeah. then, <laughs> and then, uh, this rap actually came from a GTR it's up in, uh, San Francisco and I just saw it on Instagram. I love the rap and just by chance. Uh, the Stratman, who had been a very early mentor of mine in the YouTube world, uh, had his Lamborghini with this geometric pattern, but it was in the orange and purple and white. And I drove all the way to Utah from LA and left my car up in the mountains of Park City just to have Summit Auto wrap the same style uh, geometric camo as Stradman's, but with the color scheme of the camo I saw on that GTR. And that's where we came up with nice. it. That's awesome. All right. So next step of your YouTube dream career, let's talk about the gearbox. Okay. Um, the gearbox, uh, it was kind of a... Uh, you know, as an idea originally, Nate Ryder, SBT, who has been running his channel with his Shelby and his classic Mustang. He's a big Mustang guy. Um, you know, we became friends because I won a TikTok contest of his for a set of twin turbos, which I thought were going to go in my Roush, which now I know have no business being in a Mustang. It was it was a terrible idea. Um, but we became friends. And then um, he was like, dude, I want to do a content house. And I was I was just not really game for it because I was in a good spot here. And then, you know, one day my landlord calls us up, you know, we've been here, I've been here for four years. My roommate's been here for like eight. And he said, I'm selling the property guys. This is the end of the, you know, this August, you got to leave. And I was like, oh shoot. So I called Nate back and I was like, okay, that content house, uh, are we still going to do that? And he's like, I'm down. And I was like, cool. Well, now I have a deadline. So um, we uh, called up uh, another guy that I had uh, done a video collab with, Drew Peacock. Um, he has a thousand horsepower wheel Mustang as well as a Supra and MP4 12C. He got a couple cars um, and he was looking for a new place to live. So I was like, why don't the three of us, uh, you know, start this house? So he was on board and, um, you know, we signed the lease for the house last week. We wired the money over this past weekend and we move in this weekend. And it's kind of funny because the three of us have never been in the same place at the same time. Um, oh, I've met Drew once. Drew has met Nate like twice in person. We talk all the time over IG. Um, and then I've never even seen the house. I've never been. I just, oh, I, man. the only thing we cared about was, can you park six cars there? Yes. Can we afford the rent? Yes. Doesn't matter what else. Done. So we signed the lease. Only Drew has seen the oh, house. Oh, man. <laughs> Will, you're, you, you, <laughs> you take a, a, lot, a lot of chances or a lot of uh, out there risks here. Absolutely. I mean, and it is L.A. You never know what you're going to get in L.A. No. no, there's a there's a lot of risk here. But honestly, like that's how you live a great story. And um, you, you can't always have certainty in everything you're doing. And it's kind of funny because like amidst all of this happening, um, just – the same day that uh, Jaron, your social media guy, actually called me to be on this podcast, I lost my job. And oh, no. this was like right before this content house. And I was just like, okay, that was the that was my only source of income aside from like small patriots and stuff. So I was like, how am I supposed to pay rent? I'm like back in the same situation. I was like, I thought that I was past this, you know? Good news is I already have an offer in the books. I think we'll be fine by next week. Um, it's not. It's a way different game now versus – you know, when I first got here, because now I have uh, way more savings and I have way more contacts in the car world. And it didn't take very long for me to be on the job market before I had some offers. You know what I mean? It was nice because yeah. the hard work has paid off, but it was just ironic that I'm just like, oh my God, you know, just a little bit of squirming there. I'm like, shoot, at least I have a Roush now. Like, you know, like I've got that. And it, and it was even funny too, because anytime I have a bad day, um, like earlier this week where I literally drove home from my job saying, we ran out of money. We have to let you go, you know, which is ironic because that's the same way that the strand man was let go from his job. They're just like, you're fine, but we just can't afford to keep you. Um, and then his YouTube journey took off. So this is very, uh, wow. Ironic serendipitous on time. Yeah. On time. Not that we're the same person, but it's just like, it's very, yeah. hard, you know, um, and, uh, anytime that I have a bad day, something goes horribly wrong and I have to go somewhere and I'm driving around in my car. I'm like, 
I'm in a race car. Like, this is kind of weird. It's just like, how can you have a bad day or feel like you're in trouble if you're driving a car that looks and sounds like this? It's like, you're doing something right. You know? Yep. Like, yep. if it's like, you know, so I, I love uh, going on cruises in my car. I love, uh, it, you know, exploring LA and Hollywood and everything and something that literally turns heads on the walk of fame. Man, that's, that's so cool. It, that really is. And no, and I wish you all the luck in, in, uh, so it's called the Gearbox, right? Yep. Or, Gearbox, the Gearbox, the Gearbox. Yep. Are you guys going to have like your own uh, YouTube channel that everything's, or is, is it going to be a compilation of all your guys? I think it's channels? just going to be a compilation. Yeah. So just like all the other content houses, you know, it's just like nice. We might have an IG for it. We're definitely going to release some merch pretty soon, but I think it's just going to be. You'll see each other appearing on you know each other's channels as we release content. Oh man, well we might need to bring some uh, Roush cars out to the the Gearbox. Oh, we that'd would be, love that'd be awesome. We would love that. that. Would be awesome. Yeah. So one one thing, obviously you're only 28 years old, got a lot of life ahead, but I'm sure there's a lot of things that you learned. There's a lot of kids in this space that want to become an influencer, especially in the automotive world. You see the automotive photographers, you see the influencers mm-hmm. posting on their Instagram all the time. If there's any advice that you can give them, what what, what would it be? Sure. Um, I would say that, you know, there's, I get DMs every day from people all over the world that, you know, want to shoot cars like what I shoot. They want to ride in the Lamborghinis. They want to drive these cars. They want the access, you know, and um, a really good piece of advice that I got from this guy named Steve Sims, who is, uh, he's kind of like a concierge for the ultra rich. Like he makes just wild dreams come true. Um, I wanted to work for him when I first got here. And I was like, what, you know, what do you need me to do for you? Like, what can I do? And he's like, that's the worst thing that you can ask someone because you just gave them something to do. He's like, you want to frame something as a yes or no question and deliver value to solve problems. So my advice to people is anytime you reach out to someone, whether it's a brand, an influencer, a friend, a car owner, anything like that, you want to break in this industry fast. You pay attention to what they're doing, find problems that they need solved because everyone has problems that they need solved. And then you approach them with solutions to their problems with uh, in a way where all they have to do is say yes or no. So it's no energy on their end expended to be able to even consider you as whatever it is you're offering. And right. that is kind of where I got that DM slider license plate from. It has nothing to do with yeah. girls, really. Um, yeah. It has to do with my ability to connect with people on Instagram. Most of my business is done through IG. Even the job that I was talking about that might go through next week was done through Instagram. All of my sponsorships done through Instagram. You know, it's um, it, the last job I had was through Instagram. And it's because when you approach someone through DMs, you don't have mannerisms. You don't have tonality. You don't have right. any of those things you get from in person. You got one shot to get it right. And they either open it and ignore you or delete your message or you're in business. So that yep. first message counts. And, you know, delivering value in that first message in a way where all they have to do is say yes or no is the key to connecting with almost anyone. And that applies to way more than just the automotive space. That's awesome. Etiquette to the DM slider. Yeah. Right there, yeah. guys. That's, I mean, that, that's, and then, no, that's, that's a really solid point. That is freaking awesome. All right. So favorite Roush vehicle. If you can be in any of our Roush vehicles, what would it be? Oh, the, the, the stage three V8 S197, I think. I just have a soft spot for the S197. Um, I got a, a good friend over in Vegas that has one, and we've lined up and done some pulls and some races. Uh, I oh, smack yeah. him on a dig race. He smacks me on roll races, but there's just like, God, it, it's just all the different mods on it, the wheels, the chrome wheels on that car, the oh, supercharger. Yeah. Like, it's it's perfect. I love it. I love the stage The old three. M90 thing got it yeah. done, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, you got to love uh, <laughs> supercharger. Yeah. You do. The torch is yeah. not stop. Oh no. yeah. Oh yeah. Not at all. That is awesome, man. Well, uh, if you guys didn't know already, uh, Will's at on uh, Instagram is at Bill Co. So go ahead and give him a follow and then be checking out that content here coming from the Be- Gearbox. I'm pretty excited actually to see that. That is uh, pretty cool. And I noticed Will is rocking actually one of our newest Roush Performance t-shirts there, as am I. I believe Jack's got the polo on. Oh, and yeah. he's got the hat. What's next, Will? What's next? Oh man. Um, there's, I, I, I never know. I mean, like, just look at where I'm at right now. Like I, I, I'm like 99% sure that I'm locking down a new job next week, but I really don't know, you know? And then this, this new house, it's like, we have a game plan for what we want to do, but we really don't know. I have an air force tour. I go overseas uh, to Asia for a month, August 22nd. 
I don't know what I'm coming back to. And I come back to LA. I don't know what they're going to have me doing over there. It's just like every day I wake up and I'm just like, let's just see what adventure God has in store for me today and just be prepared for anything. So like, I can only plan so much, but I can guarantee you my, uh, my RS isn't going anywhere. I love this car. I'm going to drive it till the wheels fall off of this one, just like they did the last one. And, uh, and cars are always going to be a part of what I do. Awesome. Heck yeah. (laughs) That's cool. And, and, and creatine and, uh, Chick-fil-A <laughs> isn't going anywhere either. <laughs> no, no, no. That was uh, that was uh, a thing that just kind of happened on its own where it was just like I started the 75 hard challenge. If you don't know what it is, look it up. But um, I've been the skinny kid my whole life. I got I added a little more weight after the Air Force life, but I just could never get over like 175, I think was the best I could ever do. And like when I started 75 hard, I was 170. I'm currently weighing in at 185. And the secret is literally Chick-fil-A and creatine. Um, because what's I your go-to order? It's so What's easy. Just order? a chicken sandwich, no pickles and fries, no drink or anything. It's the most basic Dang. order ever. Yeah. And, 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 it, and this it, had to start this had to start in North Carolina, right? Uh yeah, yeah, because I uh I, it actually started in Georgia where I'm from. That's where the first okay. Chick-fil-A is, still exists. It's called the Dwarf House and you can get hamburgers there. Um but the uh Chick-fil-A, I remember going as a kid and it's just maybe there's some nostalgia to it. And then, of course, yeah, North Carolina, Southern chicken, Southern fried chicken. And then, you know, it still exists right down the street here. But it's funny because nice. I always bring my, my my Roush there. And everybody knows me now in the drive-thru. Like half their staff follows me. Uh, they always pick a different color to write. It's like, okay, it's a gray coupe today. It's a blue coupe today. Like, you know, it's just they always – they know. <laughs> is that called – Oh, you know – By the way, is that called the Bilco Diet? I guess so. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I can even like endorse it. It's like, it's a terrible diet. <laughs> but it's, but it's I think funny. it sounds great to be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> it's funny. Cause like my diet is actually very, very clean. Like I, I never do anything outside of like just very clean whole foods. And then it's just like, I don't know, three, four times a week. I'm just like, I need extra calories in between meals to just keep my calorie count up. So Chick-fil-A is the one thing that checks all the boxes for cheap, fast, easy and delicious and and doesn't make you feel sick afterwards at least for me so that's why i like chick-fil-a heck yeah quick quick and easy all right one more thing here actually i gotta clear the air on something okay Uh uh-oh i know a maserati owner (laughs) oh man (laughs) and it sounds like he's trying to to call everyone out yeah please can someone do something about this guy (laughs) Please yeah. okay. shut him down. I, I just, I don't know how he ends up on, on my TikTok all the time, but it's one of the most cringe things to watch. And I'm not a huge Maserati fan. I'm, I'm well, American I muscle think, here. I think I oh, figured ahead, out what the problem is. He's mad because you're Chick-fil-A and the Maserati logo looks a little bit like the Burger King crown. I'm just saying. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. I don't know. That or it's a McDonald's M, yeah. so... I can uh, I can give you a little insight that nobody really knows yeah. that's going on in like the TikTok world right now. So this is like you can even call it like TikTok beef. Like it's very interesting. I have yeah, it is. a lot of followers from this. It is it really has been beneficial so far. But um so this guy he kept popping up on my FYP. Uh for anyone that doesn't know, it's just he's just a creator, just like anyone else on Instagram or on TikTok. Um and he has a uh Maserati Ghibli. I don't think there's anything modded on it. Uh it's a twin turbo. Um, I think he's like three to 400 horsepower or something like that. And, you know, he tight, he likes to talk a lot of smack from what I've heard. It was originally satire, but now he's just dug himself so deep in his brand. He can't like back off. So, um, a lot of people called him out. I think I was the first, there might've been maybe one or two other that have like done something, but I was the first video that at least went viral calling him out over a million, million and a half plus views where I was like, look like, cause he, he was talking trash about another Mustang driver on the East coast. And that's when I jumped in. I was like, oh, you're talking trash about this guy. Guess what? You and I live in the same city. Let's line up because I crunched the numbers it. on my Mustang and the numbers on a stock Ghibli. And I think I have a huge advantage. So I was like, you know, regardless, this is going to be great content. Let's do it. It was a friendly call out, you know, and he didn't respond. But my video went viral. But then my buddy, Estefan, who happened yeah. to live five minutes from where the content house is. Um, so funny how he and I became friends, but you'll see him a lot in a lot of videos. Um, also called him out in his BMW, uh, I think it's a 135i, I think that's what he has. Um, yeah. And uh, the Maserati guy replied. And he had to because Esteban's video, I think, did at least 12 million views. Like, it was super viral. Wow. And yeah. so it the Maserati insane. guy replied back and said, okay, I'm down. And this, the mistake he made was he um, he wanted it to be a public street race. He gave a time and a location and Ooh. put it on a video that did a million plus views. 
which, you know, Estefan and I run brands that are more on like the safer side of things. So like we like going to the track. We like, you know, yep. you know, messing around, having a little fun with our cars. But we don't like doing anything just like downright dangerous. And like that was just asking for it, especially with the amount of traffic that it was generating. So Estefan sure. and I both made videos, even though like I didn't get the call back, I still call them out. We both made videos like two days before uh, the race date that weekend and said, listen, man, like we're still down to do this, but we're going to do it at Irwindale Drag Strip, which Irwindale already confirmed. Bring it on. We'd love to have you guys. Um, and uh, we haven't heard from the Maserati guy since. So oh. um, there's been kind of mixed reviews on that. Anytime you get a video content that goes out viral, you know, you have people take their sides and a lot of people are saying, that's oh, yeah. and I back down. You know, this dude didn't even show up to that location. A lot of other people did. None of the three of us did. So it was kind of like all over the place. But I really would like for him to reply to any of our messages um, and actually show up to this drag strip because I don't like it when people think that, you know, we're backing down. But at the same time, we're not going to do anything that's unsafe, you know, because um, I've got I've got bigger brands that to represent. And that's not part of it. But um, I'm always down to line up uh, on a drag strip and see who's faster, the Roush RS or the that. Heck quote yeah. unquote Ferrari engine. I told him it wouldn't be the first time that Ford beat Ferrari, so let's make it happen. <laughs> Jack, we might we might need to bring out your uh, Focus RS out here. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, or maybe I could surprise him and just Throw. have a stage three, just roll up, be like, oh yeah, Roush is let me borrow this. <laughs> Ooh, Jack Roush edition would look nice next to a Maserati. Oh man, yeah, let's do let's, it. Let's roll with let's it. it. That'd be fun. <laughs> that is awesome. No, that is that is super cool, man. And uh, again, we appreciate you hanging out with us for the short time. And as you guys see, Will is rocking one of our new Roush Performance t-shirts. And uh, guess what, guys? You're going to have your chance at actually winning $200. Um, all you have to do is head over to RoushPerformance.com. Click that banner at the top. It says... Um, Enter to win $200 from RoushGear.com. Uh, it takes just a few seconds. Click it, and you'll be signed up, and you'll be able to pick out some some new swag. We got the truck truck gear. We got the Roush Performance shirt and the hat that uh, Bill Co's rocking over here. So pretty cool. There Can it I is. Can I say something about the shirt real quick? Like, yeah, yeah. This, Go this, for it. The cut of this shirt, like that Chick-fil-A creatine, I feel so big in this shirt. You guys got the sleeves all small and like this American flag. Like I'm driving around the car. I'm like, why does the Roush shirt literally make me feel bigger than I than I actually am? <laughs> it's all that it's all that creatine and Chick-fil-A, which you talking yeah, about. It yeah, adds no, the, no, the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's horsepower. It's funny, it adds weight. It actually makes my car slower. I'm getting bigger, I'm getting heavier. <laughs> <laughs> That is great. Well, there it is, guys. Episode three in the books with Bilko. Go give him a follow. Check out the newest content that he is going to be laying out there from the Gearbox. And uh, hopefully we'll see a uh, Mustang Maserati race in the near future. Oh, me you too. Sure? Me too. <laughs> Hold it down for us, Will. Hold it down for no us. No pressure, right? We appreciate you guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next episode.